So what I wanted to talk about is obviously we see the two of your characters looking for, for well, they don't know it's Harry, but looking for, you know, what happened, trying to figure out with the van and everything. And as viewers, we really like them. So we want them to succeed, but we also want him to get away. So can you sort of talk about, like, just sort of hypothesize, what do you think would happen if they eventually find it's him? Can they, can his character forgive Harry for killing somebody? Could he let him go? That's a I'm very <laughs> good question. Let me also give you kudos for, for uh, uh, live streaming from space. Bold. <laughs> I like your initiative there. Um, to answer your question, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how Mike, I, someone else asked me this, you know, like how would he respond once he knows what's what, if he ever does learn what's what. I think um, he's certainly aware at this phase that there's definitely some sort of conspiracy. There's some wonkiness, right? I think the cops coming to visit Deputy Liv that weren't real cops was, there was no way he could write that off. Mm -hmm. um, however, connecting it to aliens in any way, no way. No way. He just uh, he doesn't he thinks that the government probably uses aliens as a great way to do things that the government doesn't want people to think the government's doing. So if you can convince people that little green men were the one who did this great, but he's out to prove that there are no little green men. There's just G men. And I think that's what he is thinking to himself. Uh, if he were to, to discover uh, the, the real truth, um I don't know. I mean, I think there's an aspect to the comic book uh, where uh, the townspeople are more aware of, of who Harry is um, and they kind of create a protective circle, uh, you know, around him. Uh, I don't know if that would be Mike's approach. I don't know if he'd want to be Harry's friend or if he'd want to, like, be featured on Dateline as the <laughs> sheriff who brought down an alien. You know what I mean? Uh, it would be uh, what part of his ego does he want to serve the most? Uh, I guess we'll have to see when we get there. All right. Great. Thank you. I love Mike and Liv's relationship. Does he find himself trusting her opinion a little bit more in this season? Because as we've seen over the last the two seasons, it's taken a bit of, of up to really release the control, the power <laughs> that Absolutely. Mike has to trust and we, yes. would, we would use that word lightly for him as well. You know, I think I think Mike, in his mind, would see this as it's not so much that he doesn't think Deputy Liv is right. He just thinks he's writer. You know what I mean? I think that is his kind of, you know, take on things. But I think he did come to discover two things in her absence. One, he missed her. Uh, and two, he missed his best investigator. Because whether he liked it or not, um, it was her murder board that helped him start to turn the corner. Uh, and I think losing her from the force uh, uh, in season one and, and, and then literally getting down on one knee and proposing with the badge back to her to come back uh, was as close as he's going to get to an apology. Um, and I think that she's come to accept the fact that he's flawed and he's come to accept the fact that she thinks he's flawed. <laughs> I don't know if he necessarily sees himself as flawed, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I think um, th that dynamic is one that continues to build in season three. And, and I do think there's some trust there now though. Um, he is not as uh, insecure uh, about his investigative abilities around her as he as he used to be. And I think it was that insecurity that was driving this whole, I have to keep trying to pull her down a notch, you know, and it's like he's playing Jenga, you know, except what he noticed is he pulled out all of them on a complete floor and it just still stayed up. It just like had a, had a break in it, you know, he could not bring her Jenga down. Uh, and, um, and, you know, I think that was a testament to her strength, which I think he was impressed by her strength. You talk about Mike's kind of what's what's happening for him this season in the romance department, because obviously for a while, you know, he had a girlfriend. So can you just sort of talk about where that's headed? Tease a bit for. for yeah. You know, he met this uh, uh, this other investigator from another town in Jessup and uh, uh, Alina Torres. And he um, 
of course, was instantly put off because she exerted the exact type of strength and confidence uh, that that he did. Uh, but I think once he got passed again, some of his insecurities, he saw that this the strength, this strong woman was like almost exactly what he's looking for, as long as he can find a strong woman who does exactly what he says. <laughs> and that doesn't work. Those two things are not compatible. Uh, and he doesn't really know what to do with that because he's kind of stuck in this old philosophy of what a relationship is supposed to be. Um, and I think, you know, his the, the character can be a great tool uh, for us in our storytelling to, um, to kind of take the perspective of someone like Mike and maybe show them where they might have things wrong and where they might want to open up their mind a little bit. And if, uh, you know, I can be a vehicle for that, for people who need that type of expansion, uh, then so be it. Great. Thank you. It's season three, and certainly the uh, life stakes are higher than ever. What is Mike's interactions going to be like with uh, the town and and really, you know, with the heightened stakes, everything's, uh, let me reword it. What is his interaction going to be like with Enver's character? Does he get any chance to sort of connect with that version of a deputy? Well, I think on paper, he's everything he wants in a deputy, um, except like being human. <laughs> you know, he doesn't know that he's, you know, a hybrid or whatever. But I, I do think he's going to be um, feel somewhat betrayed by uh, uh, by Joseph uh, and almost betrayed by his own sense of judgment. You know, I, how did how did this guy sneak under the radar? How did I was I enamored with what he presented, you know what I mean? Like, who are we for real? Uh, because ultimately there's a lot of people who on, on our show who uh, only show certain aspects of who they are. And I think Joseph snuck under the radar on him and he didn't like that. I didn't, I, I think he sees him as another, God damn it, how in the hell do I keep missing this thing? You know what I mean? He's, he's going to the batting cage He's got on his apple goggles. He's got all the schematics on the ball and he swings every time and that bat goes flying or the, you know, he whips every time. He just, he just wants to be seen as awesome. That's all he dreams of is like just to be seen as awesome. And so, you know, we'll see if that happens. I hope somewhere in his mind, he knows that people watching really do find him awesome. At least the oh, people watching him. You know what? <laughs> I think he knows. I <laughs> love you, Corey. <laughs> Somewhere in his heart of heart, he knows. Right. <laughs> Somewhere like that old Clark Kent, you know what? Oh, I think yeah. he knows. 